tuning in to GameFi on Stacks. Welcome to the future of on-chain gaming with Stacks. I'm Zero. I'm going to be your moderator today. I started the Zero Authority DAO in the Cerulean Marketplace for Web3 gigs. We want to have a great conversation with the founders and builders in Stacks today, building true GameFi and gaming. This is this is going to be a great talk. Please drop all of your questions in the chat, and we're going to answer them as we go through the through the conversation. Today, we have special guests from the Stacks ecosystem who are building games on Stacks secured by Bitcoin. Anatoly, he is the founder of Stacks Force. They have created a really cool chess game that you could play today. Norbert is the founder of Wannabe Games, and they have a whole host of gaming and GameFi and a series of, of different games and content that they're creating. And of course, no introduction needed. Sir Jonathan, co-founder of Stax Degens, a really cool uh, Circa classic racing game with, with NFTs and customizable NFTs. And Sir Jonathan, he is going to give us an intro today on what is GameFi, what can you expect when you play different games, why on Stacks, and how can users benefit from GameFi on Stacks secured by Bitcoin. So we're going to hand it off to him and then we're going to bring it back into the discussion with all of us here and go through different topics and please drop your your comments the questions and and we'll address them as we go here so thanks again for having us thank you thank you zero hello everyone i'm sir jonathan the founder of stacks dgens and with the help of stacks foundation we're going to be spearheading the development of gamefi infrastructure on stacks the goal of this event is to offer a clear overview of GameFi on Stacks, why we are building it here and what's to come. GameFi in itself stands for gaming and finance, and it is extremely important for creating a massive wave of adoption of Web2 users into Web3. As we all know, there are millions and millions of gamers worldwide. Now, what makes GameFi attractive? Um, GameFi basically is the crossroads between gaming and blockchain, and it tends to put together the best out of both worlds. On one side, you have an amazing Web2 experience playing games, but on the, other, on the other side, you need security and transparency. And with the help of blockchain, you, the players themselves can gain and share a piece of the success of the games they love. As we all know, through NFTs, you can basically own a share of that success. Why should we develop that on Stacks? Well, there are many reasons for this, but I try to sum them up into three main points. As we all know, the, the programming language that Stacks uses is Clarity. It is not EVM compatible and for that it offers total transparency. And what I mean by this is the smart contract code on the blockchain is published publicly in a human readable format so that even if you don't have the skills of a wizard developer, you can still understand what's there. And with the help of post conditions, you are basically you basically always know what you are confirming. As we all know, there have been many sad events in which people are losing their NFTs or their funds because they do not know what they are signing. On Stacks, that's not the case. If you if a if signing a transaction means you are going to send 1000 stacks when signing it you will just have a message there this transaction does not transfer more than 1001 stacks which is great and kind of takes a lot of room from from hackers to be able to exploit you there's also the message signing side and in our case in the gamefi case what this does is in case you want to make an action which does not require an on-chain transaction you can still confirm with the game host that the actual owner of the wallet is doing that is is making that action happen by using the signature of your own wallet why on top of bitcoin well basically bitcoin is the world's most owned cryptocurrency 
And if we're going to try to have something adopted worldwide, worldwide, obviously we're going to want to make that happen with something that people already own and that many, many get to understand way easier. Stack 2.1 also wants to unlock Bitcoin native, native assets and smart contract control. And as we all know, Bitcoin is the world's most secure blockchain in the world. So it's going to be a pretty, pretty tough job for hackers in, term of, in terms of exploiting. Moving on to the developer side. There are tons and tons of resources for any developer if he wants to dive deeper into Clarity and GameFi. There are written and video tutorials, open source GitHub repos, and an amazing community which is there to help you grow. Uh, as a quick story, we would not, it would not be able, it, we would not be here if it wasn't for the amazing developer community. And this way, I want to give a shout out to the likes of Jamil or Pseudozak or Bryce, because only through their help, we are able to, to be here at this, at this moment. And what I mean to say by this is that everyone here has only one mission and that's to increase adoption. And by that, everyone wants everyone else to succeed. We've also built a GameFi platform, and I will ask Rick to share the link afterwards, in which if you want to start building GameFi dApps, you will have there tons of, of tutorials, even smart contract templates on how you can start developing. And at the end of the month, Deployer, our main developer, will be holding a workshop uh on how to go from zero to hero with gamefi meaning that at the end of that workshop you will be able to integrate an nft into a dap even if you aren't the world's most experienced developer now i want to give a a quick overview over the current state of gamefi on stacks up until now we've We've mainly focused on smart contracts in order to eliminate kind of the friction of moving from Web 2 to Web 3 for a game developer. As we all know, up until now, the most common reason for lack of adoption of games or them moving into Web 3 was the fact that game developers are not Web 3 developers in general, and that's an issue. So that's what we've been trying to tackle. Uh, for example, we've created smart contracts for trustless rewards. Well, what they do is, let's say you want to, I will offer our game as a, as a quick example. You want to race against someone else. And as a new user, you may be afraid to, let's say you want to race for 100 stacks against someone else, right? You may be afraid as a user to just commit your funds to a website or to a game studio pretty much but with the help of smart contracts we are eliminating this need of trust the user can genuinely see how his funds are going to be handled and how the rewards are going to be given regarding bitcoin we have integrated a way for bit native bitcoin to be used as an in-game currency in game so right now, if you want to race against someone for 0 0.1 BTC, you can literally just scan your QR code, a QR code and you can commit native BTC from your own Bitcoin wallet, not needing a Stacks wallet besides the, the actual NFT. Then there's the loot boxes. Um, the loot box is also, basically we're trying to decentralize gaming as much as possible. Uh, I'm pretty sure that many of you have played games before in which you, let's say you get a loot box and that loot box has a 2% or 3% chance of giving you a super rare item. And somehow even after opening 100 loot boxes, you still don't get the super rare item. And this tends to create tons of, confuser, of, of confusion for gamers because they ask, their, ask a question, which is normal is the game studio trying to make tons of profits out of me? 
uh, well, using the on-chain VRF, this is not going to be a, fu uh, a future problem anymore because the way the items you will be receiving can, can be the way, well, let me put this differently. Um, the on-chain VRF is a random number that each block has. Based on that number, each individual item which you will be receiving can be predicted after you already get that, but not before you get it. So there will be no question on the items you will be receiving. And once again, this wants to offer a stronger relationship between the player himself and the actual game studio. Moving forward to the customizable NFTs, um, as we all know, there's the term finance in GameFi, and we don't want to ignore that. This offers a possibility for Game Studio to create a whole ecosystem, financially speaking, for their own game. I will once again use Stacks Degens as an example. Um, basically, your car is going to be composed by individual NFTs, which in the future will give you separate uh, properties when playing the game and benefits. Now, let's say you just want to swap the rims and get a 10% better handling. You can just detach the said rims. Someone else can buy them if he finds them to improve their own car. And that way the initial user makes more money, is able to trade his own, his own items, his money isn't stuck inside the game and he can always perform better. And there's also the GameFi platform, which I have mentioned previously. Um, what's to come? Um, subnets are going to be, at least in my opinion, one of the most major updates or upgrades in Stacks history. Um, the main reason for, for a lack of adoption up until now on Stacks was speed. And through subnets, that's going to be solved. And if we think about them in a practical sense, the main reason why you need speed is for either NFTs or gaming. You can wait five minutes for your funds to be transferred, but when trying to play a game, uh, you're going to have a bad time if you want to wait 10 minutes for each individual transaction, so to speak. So that's going to, we want to build the infrastructure so that other game studios can just come and plug and play basically their whole game and adapt to them. SFTs, which are semi-fungible tokens, are a way for storing data on chain, especially for in-game items. Let's say you want you have a game in which you're building your own village. Uh, the buildings themselves are are they all they they all have their own levels, right? So you want to upgrade your building from level one to level two to level three. If we can manage to get all of this on chain, there will be no reason for people to feel threatened about potential hacks or maybe some, some users kind of hacking the game because all of the data in game is going to be stored on chain. So that is going to be fully verifiable for everyone. Once again, decentralizing gaming and focusing on, on increasing trust for game studios. Arbitrary message signing, I've mentioned that before. It's a way to confirm with the, with the game studio that it's you making that transaction, if, even if uh, it's not going to be on-chain directly. And there's also the decentralized story side. What better way to actually store data if not in a decentralized way? And we will also be focusing on this and we want to do it with Gaia, either Gaia or Pinata so that game studios will not have an issue with this either. This pretty much sums it up. Uh, I want to give the word back to Zero and thank you very much. Thank you, sir, Jonathan. Thank you for that overview of what is game five, why on stacks, and what are some of the, the features that are coming that can, can really 
evolve the the space and take us to the next level here. And so we're going to get into the conversation. But before we do, there was a stat that I came across uh, a few weeks and probably even a month ago. And and the number of Web3 developers is, is about 18,000 in total. The number of developers worldwide is 24 million. So uh, out of all of the, the developers worldwide, that 18,000, that's about 0.075%. And then when you even get it down to the segmentations of DeFi, NFTs, GameFi, it's even smaller. So all that to say, we're really early. GameFi is a new category. It's a combination of gaming, digital economies, and ownership. And, and it's such a a powerful concept because as digital ownerships become more prevalent from studios and companies and games, they're going to explore the idea of transferred ownership from a company to the collectors and to the, the people actually playing the game. So why, why is that important? Because in GameFi, in-game assets have monetary value and real world use cases. You can transfer this ownership to someone else you own that ownership. The assets are owned by the individuals. In your wallet, you you have access to own that asset. The players get to make the decisions on the updates and the roadmap. That, that's the power of bringing, bringing your community around this game and, and incentivizing it with the digital economy or with the token or with the NFT. And, and that's what a lot of people miss in that equation. While the category is still is relatively immature, the idea that you can own your character, the NFT, your skins, it's it's a revolution from where we used to be. From the Web 2 models to the Web 3 models, people want to own their assets. People want digital ownership. And so talking to everyone here today, we're going to talk to Anatoly, Nor Norbert, and Sir Jonathan about their games and what they've been creating. And so we're gonna get into this conversation now. Uh, Anatoly is the founder of Stacks Force and he created a, a really cool chess game. Norbert has has also created a, a mobile racer game and he's working on a, uh, I believe it's called, it's almost like Flappy Pet. So it's really cool. Casual gaming, mobile gaming is gonna be a big deal. And of course, Sir Jonathan has created Stack Degens when, when they have the power to bring native Bitcoin into the game and you could use it for your, your races and for your lobbies, that's going to be really cool and another big catalyst for where GameFi is going. So to open up the conversation, Anatoly, can you can you give us a brief overview with um, of, of Stacks Force and the game that you're creating and, and where do you see Web3 and GameFi going? Yeah, sure. Uh, thank you, Zero. So uh, my name is Anatoly, and I'm co-founder and CEO of Stacks Force, and, and we're building a Web3 gaming platform on Stacks. So uh, right now we've built uh, several games. Started with a chess game, and uh, now we have a few few extra games. You can check them on our web. And uh, finally, we plan to introduce you our gaming platform by the end of November, where we will onboard Web 2 and Web 3 games. So uh, if, if we talk about uh, the future of Web 3, I believe that uh, that's really uh, an extremely complex question because uh, we have so many scenarios. Uh, but uh, the one thing that I can uh, definitely and tell you that uh, we'll see the race of uh, Web3 and uh, ga games next year. I know that there are a lot of developers uh, going to Web3 right now. There are a lot of tools for game developers developing right now. I know that uh, Sir Jonathan, Norbert and uh, my team were doing a lot of great stuff for game developers on Stacks and Bitcoin. And uh, we'll see I am not sure how it will be in the future, but for sure we'll see the great race of Web3 in the next year.
Thank you, Anatoly. And and Norbert, can you give us a, a an overview of of what you've created with the the mobile racer and and wannabe games? Sure, thank you. So uh, I'm Norbert, and I'm the CEO and founder of uh, Wannabe Games. So we started a, a year ago, and we've uh, using some code necromancy. We've uh, We've used a 2015-ish uh, racer game called Creature Racer, and we've launched uh, our POC on uh, Polygon. But uh, from the very beginning, we we wanted to use Stacks as the as the blockchain layer, and currently we are uh, migrating the Creature Racer game to to Stacks. We have also uh, Flappy Pets 3D. It's like Flappy Birds game in which you will be using same characters as you will be using in the creature racer game so the you will have the ability to cross uh, use your nfts in in different games but uh, we are all doing it all uh, just to show that it's doable and it's possible as our main focus is on actually creating tools for web2 developers to uh, to port and to build games to web3 For, for the creation of, of these tools, I know all of you guys in different ways are pushing stacks forward to either implement Bitcoin or develop the infrastructure and, and reusable cases. Uh, Sir Jonathan, can you tell us about the recent addition of the customizable NFT assets for the Stacks Degen game and, and what how can others use that if they want to create uh, games? Well... <clears throat> that's that's actually a great question. Uh, since we launched the game and have started building on stacks, we've always thought about how we can offer the most to the community. I mean, being efficient in our work and how may also other developers benefit out of that. Uh, those are going to be mainly smart contracts. Uh, they are done in a modular version so that other nft projects will be able to use and mainly let's say even if we're talking about crash punks shout out to theo uh, who wouldn't love to have their own crash punks customizable right like it would be dope genuinely speaking taking all the traits like let's say you have five different nfts you want to combine them and make an amazing one and maybe you want to sell an individual trade because you don't necessarily like that one, but you like the whole NFT in itself, you will still be able to do that. That creates volume, that creates traction, and people will genuinely be more excited about the whole project in itself. So that was the whole goal and vision for the customizable NFTs. And uh, I see a comment from Tio. He's definitely on board for selling traits and and using it uh, for your your crash punks. That's awesome. We had a question uh, uh, from uh, 20v.btc. Is there a mobile friendly version? So I, I think for for you, Norbert, there is a mobile version. Um, I know you guys, Anatoly and Sir Jonathan, you guys are working on different mobile versions, right? That would mainly be a question for Anatoly, if you're asking me, and their Unity development. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're working uh, on it right now. Awesome. Anatoly, we, we had a lot of discussions over since I've met you over the last couple months, and something that you're working on is, um, in addition for Stacks Force, where you guys have this chess game, you guys are also working on a on a, this plug and play for web two developers to be able to plug their games in. Tell us about the the level of interest in the game that you've seen so far, and then please tell us about how how web two developers can plug and play into Stacks. Yeah, thank you, Zero, for this question. Uh, right now, uh, we're working on our gaming platform called Force Prime for uh, mostly for Web2 game developers. And uh, the main goal is to help them onboard 
a start migration to Web3 with a minimum effort from their side. Because we see a lot of interest from Web2 game developers. So they're really looking uh, for Web3, but also they don't want to do it uh, like on a risky manner. That's why we created our SDK for Unity game engine, Halal SDK, uh, and using our Force SDK, any Web2 game that was built on Unity could be connected in less than a week to our Force Prime platform that will release pretty soon. And uh, we see a great interest from Web2 game developers. So we have a huge pipeline of game studios that are looking for our release because uh, they want to enter the market and they want to start playing with it. So basically it works like they use our SDK as a Web3 wrapper for their existing game for authorization and payments. And after that, uh, they can connect their existing game to stacks. And after they can start iterating iterations with the implementations like NFTs, probably some, some incentives and all uh, Web3 stuff. But from the very beginning, they could connect it to uh, their existing Web2 game as it is. Can you tell us about the level of interest that that people are coming to play the game to and and connect their wallet, play a game? I think that's really cool. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because uh, we see from game developers that they are really looking for some easy way. And also we see a lot of interest from Stacks users with Stacks wallets uh, where they want to get uh, some good experience and uh, Force Prime platform is like a great match for them because you can, instead of uh, spending USD or in-app payments, you can connect your wallet and uh, pay in stacks and get rewards directly to your wallet. So that's pretty cool. Really cool. The rise of, of hyper casual and casual gaming. Uh, I've seen a, a stat somewhere that of all gaming, core gaming, where you have your console gaming and and your hardcore gamers that may play World of Warcraft and and um, Fortnite, for example, it's it's a it's a big crowd that plays on their mobile devices. And, and Norbert, I know you're you're designing some casual gaming. The the market for casual game is big. You and I have talked about the difference between core gamers and casual gamers, where someone. Um, maybe at the supermarket playing some some casual game maybe flappy bird maybe um uh some easy casual game and and they're they may not consider themselves a gamer but they are what what would you say for those people coming in playing games on on stacks um web3 game by how would how would you characterize them making that transition and in, into web3 gaming the most important thing is uh, to, to make uh, the transition uh, seamless. So they, they don't need to understand the tech uh, and uh, for sure they shouldn't be scared of uh, crypto investments uh, and things like that. So they just need to come into the ecosystem, uh, log in with their wallet. This is a, a technical barrier for them. So actually downloading and using a wallet and then enjoying the game they shouldn't be thinking about anything else so that that's really important to to making the the first transition from a a, a casual gamer into the web free world to, to to make it really really easy you know we, we've, we've talked with uh with lots of uh game dev studios we've, we've signed lois with uh, game dev studios that have uh, over 100 games uh, some of their games were uh, downloaded over 170 million times, etc. So uh, during our talk right now, uh, Vogue Poland uh, signed an LOI with us. But the, the most important thing is that all of those people don't understand completely web free. They don't understand what is it. And they don't, they don't understand crypto, mambo jumbo, DeFi, GameFi, whatever it is. They just don't get it and they don't want to. 
It's like uh, when you are using uh, Google, uh, you don't want to know how the HTTP protocol works. You just want to Google cats memes and have cats memes, and that's it. So that's our main goal is to actually make the transition seamless. Yeah, kind of, if you want to put it that way, they are focusing on actually onboarding the users while we are trying to make life as easy as possible for developers to, to make that transition. And so Jonathan, in that transition, I, I know you guys do a lot of outreach and education and, and before you know it, we'll have Bitcoin, native Bitcoin in the Stack Degens games. Can you tell us about some of that education and outreach that you guys do? And, and then uh, just if we peek around the corner and look into the future where, where you can have um, either like DLCs or, or be able to, to use native Bitcoin in the games, uh, could you just tell us about what that user experience could be like? <sighs> That's a great question. I've been talking a lot with Diego uh, from City Packs a lot on this on this matter. If we even if we look right now, there are elementary schools using Minecraft for teaching children mathematics, for example, which is amazing in my point of view. It makes the whole learning experience way easier, and. Basically, kids and younger people are the future, obviously, and we want to make it as easy as possible for them to dive, dive deep into the future, into the future. Basically, that's what Bitcoin is. At, after all, it's basically the future. Uh, and how can we do that either than by true games and gaming? Every single kid in the world is playing games. Like there is not one single kid in this world that has played at least one game. So if we take it from that perspective, if we can implement in games, in, in gaming in general, uh, a pleasant experience of learning as well on the Web3 side, that would be great. And I do not have any final decisions made on that topic, but we are strongly considering building in that regards as well. Yeah, more more to come on that. Uh, Anatoly, I, I know you guys, for the SDK, and I know you touched on this, how easy will it be for, let's say, hey, I created a game and, and I keep hearing about Web3, Bitcoin, Stacks, and, and I want to do something. I, I want to just dip my toe into Web3 and into to gaming. How easy would that be for me just to, kind of, I, I'm sure there's still some technical challenges that it's not, you can't just click a couple of buttons, but how, e and maybe I'm wrong, how easy will that be for for those those games that want to launch on, on Stacks and use the SDK for Stacks Force? Yeah, uh, so it will be almost a uh, few clicks, uh, not few clicks, but few lines of code that you need to implement in your uh, to your game uh, using your Unity game engine. So when we talk about uh, onboarding your game, uh, we have like three parts. First one is uh, customer like, players authorization. So it's players journey. But when we're talking about Stacks community, they already have Stacks wallets. Then you have um, game design, uh, aka user experience. A player's experience where you test different game mechanics and uh, when you have existing game uh, we suppose that you like tested your mechanics and you want to connect them to stacks as it is so you don't want uh, to start new like experiments from the very beginning so that's why you take your existing game then you using force sdk um, you just add few lines of code to connect a wallet, to make authorization via wallet, and to enable payments, and so on. Then, after that, after you uh, connect your game, you can start 
playing with it, you can start implementation of different uh, advanced Web3 mechanics, advanced uh, incentive mechanism, and so on. But we see that for existing game, first uh, integration will be extremely short. It's, we expect that it will be a few days, but let's say less than a week. And definitely, if we talk about Web3 native games that were developed on Ethereum or like whatever, uh, with a very complex Web3 design and smart contracts from the very beginning, with a very deep integration, it will be not so easy because you have to change a lot because architecture is different. Absolutely. Uh, Norbert, something that we've talked about in the past is, is that um, in that transition to gaming and, and with casual gaming, there's going to be a resurgence of, of people learning clarity. And, and a lot of people talk about today, well, people are using Polygon, they're going to want to use Solana because it's cheaper and faster. But you had that experience using Polygon, and now you, you're here building on Stacks. Can you tell us about the experience building on Stacks and and making that transition? Because I, I, I do think a lot of people think, well, if it's cheaper and faster, that's where people are going to go. But if you look at what the where the, the talent and where the resources is going, it's still Bitcoin, it's still Ethereum. And this, this is why I think the proof of, of stake transition or the proof of stake merge that Ethereum went through, a lot of POS chains will just have to compete with Ethereum, especially as they, they continue to scale. But because Stacks is in a unique position with proof of transfer and the connection and the symbiotic relationship with Bitcoin and Bitcoin, we know it's going to last the test of time. Just, can you just tell us about that transition coming over to Stacks and and why why build on Stacks and why why have it secured by Bitcoin? Uh, so ba basically, I'm a Bitcoin centrist. I'm not I'm not a maxi, but uh, I'm a Bitcoin centrist. So I believe that uh, people like regular Joes around the world don't know anything about Ethereum, and for sure they've never heard about Polygon, Solana, or or whatever. So uh, when they want to uh, have a web free to give a web free try, they will probably look for uh, Bitcoin apps, and uh, and that is uh, what I believe in. That when you are building on Bitcoin using stacks as a techno technological layer, uh, you are opening the floodgates for all those regular jobs. And when we focus on casual gamers all around the world that are not focused on being a gamer or actually putting a label on themselves, uh, just having fun. Uh, this is a, a way to go for us. And when we were on, on Polygon, there was uh, so much uh, noise and buzz around that uh, it was uh, hard to, to be heard actually when, when developing something. And uh, here at Stacks, uh, the community is great. So I've had some great help from Anatoly, from Stacks Digins. Uh, so it, it's really great. Trevor helped us a lot. So basically, it's it's completely different, and it's the time to build on Stacks right now because the ecosystem is uh, quite small right now. So it's easier to to make connections and to build products that uh, that you want to build. One one hundred percent, and even even as we continue to grow as stacks, as a community, as different founders within this community and the ecosystem, I hope this is my message to everyone that we keep the ethos of building. We keep the ethos of of being able to invite others, even even all the people, and we know them that that say stacks is a scam or or that uh, we're a bunch of degens. Even even those people that we we have some level of of civility and and we can still we can still give the the facts about what we're trying to build. We're trying to bring more utility to Bitcoin, and and those people on Twitter you can you can be nice, give the facts, and just let them keep, continue on their soapbox, but also give them a warm 
warm welcome to say, hey, anytime you're ready to come over to Stacks, we're going to be here and you're going to be here a part of this building with us and you're not going to be an outsider. So once once they change their mind, we also need to to give them some grace too, and and not just hold them to their narrow view of what they think Stacks is, because I, I've been I've been in the ecosystem since 2018, 19. And I've seen the transition of people who who did not believe that that stacks could bring more utility to Bitcoin. And I mean, just recently, just talking to Brian, uh, Brian from from Choice App, talking to Ragnar, who who are uh, Bitcoin centrist, and they also see this world where more utility on Bitcoin is needed. So this this is really cool to have people tuning in to see this and see you guys building some some games on stacks secured by Bitcoin. Really cool stuff. Uh, we're we're going to be running short on time. We we have a couple of um, uh, minutes still to go here. Before we do, please drop your your comments in the chat so we can we can uh, read out any questions that you have. Uh, let's see uh, from Ivan on chain games is needed to protect hidden information since the game does not have hidden information to be deterministic and can be calculated by AI. Uh, Anatoly, do you, did you, I, it, it does, it's not a question, but just reading that, what, what comes to your mind when you read that? Yeah, uh, I believe that uh, definitely we are not still not in the uh, ideal position in terms of Web3 gaming. But if you uh, remember how mobile gaming was developed, like uh, first games were pretty shitty ones because uh, there were no good tools and all this stuff, but still people like love to play. And uh, I believe we'll see the same part for Web3. At the very beginning, we'll have like, some part of uh, the game will be on-chain, but something will be off-chain, definitely something will be on a web two style on uh, servers and all this stuff but in five years we'll have completely different tool set with a completely different uh, games but still today we can build something beautiful it will be not uh, the best web three game ever but it will be a beautiful thing um also if i may add to what ivan is saying i'm not sure if he was present during the presentation itself or not but that's exactly what we are doing with the loot boxes. It's a pretty much one-to-one -one example to his point made that in order to eliminate the, the deterministic issue in games, especially when randomizing things, you can just use the on-chain VRF, which is pretty much as random as it gets. And if you get to do that, you will not have that issue anymore. And at the same time, the need of trust for the game studio disappears because it's obviously all, all there in the smart contracts. So there's that. But good point nonetheless. Good point, Ivan. Yeah, yeah, great points. And Ner Norbert, what, what was the link you shared? It's a link that I got from Hero uh, about zero knowledge proofs on, on Bitcoin. That uh, there was this, uh, this huge paper wrote about uh, probably trying to have zero knowledge proofs on, on, on Bitcoin, similar to ZK Snark and ZK Spark. So I'm not the technological guy, but I digged into it because uh, uh, internally we were uh, discussing using ZK, uh, ZK, ZKP uh, in one of our products. That's awesome. Sir Jonathan, you mentioned uh, subnets and it used to be called hyperchange. Now it's back to subnets. How are you guys going to implement subnets to, to, to really give uh, a better experience for, for users. We genuinely hope that we're going to be the first one implementing the subnets. We <laughs> shall see about that. <laughs> but that's my 
that's my that's our goal uh we've already started preparing for it uh we have in plans maybe even creating uh, specific subnets for game five projects and with that with that i genuinely think everyone's lives are going to be, be way easier than they currently are and there will literally be zero reasons for not starting to build on stacks at this point after we have the speed section secured literally there, there will be no reason you have security uh smart contracts are amazing the programming language is as secure as it gets uh in a sense that it offers the transparency to the user um yeah this kind of sums it up i think the subnets are the last puzzle piece that needs to be connected and afterwards things will will go will skyrocket kind of i i i totally feel that too and bringing uh, with the dlcs uh the discrete law contracts and what aki is is building then bringing native Bitcoin peg in, peg out what Munib has, has stated. And I know there's been a lot of uh, good conversations around that. Really, really interested to see those developments. And subnets is another catalyst to bring the next million to, to hundreds of million people to stacks to, to build onto Bitcoin. Uh, same question for, for you, Sir Jonathan, and, and then Anatoly. You guys could have built anywhere on any chain at any time. But here you are with stacks, and is it something about this community? I mean, I I could share my experiences that I've from from everyone in the community, from Tio to Kyle to Andrea to to you guys and and to Arcadico, Alex and and um, Jamil and Nick with Gamma and Mark with Megapon and and everyone from all the NFT projects. Everyone is always kind everyone will always jump in to help but what what is your experience uh sir jonathan especially as a newcomer you always tend to look at the community and stacks in itself i mean last year when we started building here was way smaller than it is now but every single person was helpful and we kind of were lucky in a way that we were one of the first nft projects ever launched we were just an nft project back then uh but from the starting point talking to jamil who owned uh, it's not it was not gamma back then how was it stx nft yeah it was stx nft back then uh he literally wanted to do the smart contracts for for the actual nfts and help us get onboarded everyone in the community was excited about what everyone else was building it was stacks is so beautiful because nobody wants you to fail everyone wants you to succeed because people understand that if the one next to me wins i am going to win as well if stacks gets adopted my project gets adopted. If they gain attention, we will also gain attention. So it's not as if, as on Ethereum projects where there were those talks between uh, BAYC and CryptoPunks back but last summer, I believe there they were, and they were arguing, no, my project is better. Oh no, my project is better. No, we're doing better. It's not the case here. Just the whole end goal is to win. If you win, everyone is happy. So there's that to, to for me to add. And 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 totally before you answer that, I I also realized. Look, there are many improvements to make in our ecosystem and across the board. My comment doesn't doesn't negate that there are things that need to be improved uh, from from some community aspects, from some technical development aspect. There there are a lot of things to improve, but um, I, I just wanted to say that and it's not everything isn't perfect. It so I I don't want to paint this super rosy picture like there's no problems and nothing needs to be fixed. There there are quite a few things to address. But uh, Anatoly, can you can you share your experience and and why you decided to come build on stacks and, and secure by Bitcoin. 
Yeah, sure. So we've checked uh, several uh, blockchains before we went to Stacks, and because we were focusing on uh, like non-technical, non-crypto users, because we want to engage a lot of uh, regular players uh, to our platform, uh, the main uh, priority was uh, security for them because we wanted, you know, to reduce uh, the level of scam as much as possible, and. Uh, with Ethereum, it's not so easy. So that's why we decided to check uh, how Stack's working and all this stuff. And uh, uh, be uh, before I will tell my full experience, uh, I realized while Sir Jonathan was talking that uh, we can uh, compare like different blockchains uh, as a startups. And when you talk about uh, startup, like at the early stage, because all blockchain they're at the very early stage right now, the main, one of the major points is the team and uh, Stacks leaders. Uh, let's go. We, we have a lot of leaders in different uh, industries in Stacks, but uh, all of them they are amazing, and uh, you can find this on other chains. You don't see uh, this information while you're outside of Stacks, but when you inside. You have great community and you have great leaders. Uh, everyone, you can connect to anyone. And uh, when you talk to them, you understand that they know what they're doing, why they're doing. And definitely, uh, probably from technical side, when we joined Stacks, it was not as good as some other blockchains. But the speed of development, the understanding of what to do next, why to why to do it uh, it was great and uh, i will do a short promotion we were happy to join stacks uh, via stacks web3 startup lab uh, running by albert and uh, trevor who spent the tons of time with us and that's a great opportunity i know that applications are still open because i see that uh, quite a lot of people listen to us if you think about building something on stacks probably even you if you don't uh, have technical team, you still still should go and apply because that's a great opportunity. Albert, Trevor, all mentors, they are amazing. The whole program is amazing. You still connect with a lot of community members and uh, and that's the best thing you can do this week. Absolutely. You beat me to the punch, Anatoly. I was, I was going to say, can you tell us about your experience with the web3 founders lab and and for those who may be watching this live or watch this on the record web3 founders lab led by albert is an amazing pre-accelerator and and if you want to have if you have an idea and you want to validate it and go through the the lean startup methodology him and his team are there to support you to give you guidance to shepherd you to show you how to validate your ideas, how to test them out. And, and that gives you the confidence because then the next step for you in the journey of your team or you and the co-founder, could it can be the Stacks Ventures. And so that's led by Kyle, Trevor, Andrea, and, and many other folks. I know Jake Blockchain is over there now doing some great work. So you can start with the pre-accelerator, Web3 Startup Lab, with Albert and team and company. And there are many great advisors and mentors there. And then if you're ready to take the net, next step, go to the Stacks Ventures Accelerator. And so that's stacks.ac. And I know applications are open and we'll have to drop it here in, in the chat. If someone could drop it in the chat, that would be great. Um, but uh, just tell us really quick, Anatoly, about just going through the Web3 Founders Lab Yeah, uh, we were at the cohort one, and uh, this week uh, they're finishing applications for cohort two, and uh, the whole experience was extremely great. Uh, it's uh, eight weeks, and uh, at the very beginning you start with uh, just you know to get uh, uh, the major information about stacks, uh, talk to people, and uh, invalidate your idea because. Uh, we've pivoted probably six or seven times during two weeks and uh, probably will never 
progress so fast without uh, Startup Lab. And uh, so I know that this uh, time it will be a little bit slightly different program. Uh, first four weeks uh, you will spend on uh, invalidating your initial idea and uh, finding finding real real project that makes sense to do right now. After that, you will meet a lot of uh, mentors from every single industry, from DeFi, uh, DAOs, uh, technical side, uh, NFTs, uh, everything, literally everything that is building on stacks. Uh, we also had uh, several hackathons and uh, deep dive into clarity language. And finally, you will have to some real great experience on uh, your pitching practice at, at the very end. And so in total, in less than eight weeks, you will get like, ultimate experience. And uh, today, uh, this Brex Rater Web3 Founders Lab is one of the ultimate benefits uh, that Stacks has uh, against other blockchains. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that uh, with this program, Stacks will like grow way faster with uh, like re really great projects. Yeah, uh, and we're we're thank you so much for sharing that experience. Of that, that's important. The the web I, I posted the links there. So if you're if you're interested, if you have an idea, and, and these things do not cost you anything. People are here to support you. If you watch this on the replay, there is no cost to these programs. Join bring a co-founder, bring yourself, bring an idea, be ready to do some work. And uh, we're, we're running short on time. And Anatoly, Norbert, Sir Jonathan, thank you so much. Before before we depart here, if you could just give a quick brief of where people can find you and, and wh what is the future of your game? What does that look like? And we'll start, we'll start with Norbert. Sure. So uh, people can find us on wannabe.games. It's uh, it's our page, and uh, we'll be redirected from there to to our tw Twitter, which we just launched. Or you can just uh, follow me on uh, on Twitter. It's at n redkey, uh, and yeah. And in the nearest future, we'll be. We'll be launching two games on Stacks, uh, two mobile games on Stacks, and uh, we'll be providing uh, by the end of the year. We will have uh, tool sets for uh, Web two game developers to seamlessly enter Web three on Stacks. So that is our roadmap, in, really briefly. And thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. I will take the word afterwards. Then. Um, I'm, you can find me. Ah, you put the, you put it there. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much, Zero, for that. Um, either Stacks Dgens on Twitter or Bowtie or Jonathan, if you literally have any questions regarding GameFi or are even considering starting building on Stacks, please feel free to DM either me or the official page or deployer doesn't really matter. Uh, we are here to help you and support you to grow. So yes, uh, my bad. I forgot to mention about Web3 Startup Lab, one topic. Uh, that's community management and uh, community building. You will also learn a lot uh, on how to build your social media and manage your community on Discord. So that's a great option. Uh, for us, yeah, the best way is to follow us on Twitter, Stacksforce, thank you, Zero. And uh, please DM us uh, any, any question that you have. And uh, our plan is by the end of the year to launch our platform for Web2 Games and start onboarding uh, game studios. And by the end of the year, we will have like 20 to 30 games on Stacks already live. That's amazing. Um, as a one last mention, um, at the end of November, I will mention this once again, that's the next GameFi upcoming event. 
uh deployer our main developer will be holding a workshop uh on integrating an nft into a d app um jenny thank you I, jenny has put that the the link for signing up for that event and feel free to to show up and start building on stacks and special thank you to Jenny, Shannon, and Brick for putting this on and hosting all of us. So thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. And or if you're watching on the replay, could not do this without you. So thank you, everyone. Take care.